Pontiacs, Buicks, Oldsmobiles, and GMC trucks. Remember, we'll meet or beat any deal or give you the car. Well, the frenzy is just ahead, but first, it's a big weekend for both Purdue basketball teams. Both the men and the women are in second place in the league. Gene Cady's Boilermakers need a win at Northwestern tomorrow to stay within a game of Michigan State and Ohio State. The coach is confident that if the team remains patient and within the system, they can continue to succeed. I don't know, slow down type games do not mean anything in this league, but for 20 years we've averaged 12 wins, so it's a pretty damn good system, I'd say. I mean, I tried fast break and impressing for three years, and we got second, third, and seventh. It didn't work. So I'm going back to playing smart, playing hard, and playing together. So far, it's worked better. Sunday, the Purdue women are at first place Penn State. After Thursday's win over Indiana, the Boilermakers stand just a game and a half behind the Nittany Lions. You know, the team that we had last year was special, and we went in there with a lot of emotion and came out with, um, you know, a great game and overtime and came out with a win. So I think it does give us a bit of confidence, but Penn State's playing great right now. They came in and beat us on our home court, so we got to look, um, you know, to get some revenge and look forward to playing them. The Purdue-Penn State game tips off in Happy Valley just after 5 o'clock Sunday. Murder indictments were filed today by a Fulton County grand jury against Baltimore Ravens linebacker Ray Lewis and two of his friends. And former Cincinnati quarterback Jeff Blake is signed with the New Orleans Saints. The Saints are allowing Danny Warfel and Billy Joe Hobart to become free agents. The state high school swim meet down in Indianapolis, West Lafayette's Tammy Costner is seated second in the 100 backstroke, and Jesse Landrum is third in the 100 breast. Jeff's Vicky Like is 10th in the 500 free. Diving prelims are tomorrow at 9 a.m. Now stay tuned. The Frenzy is next. a better place for business the network place sharp can take you there people are connected knowledge is shared and sharps advanced digital document systems the imager series speed the flow of ideas through the network creating impressive documents and raising productivity to its peak smith office plus and sharp can take you there the Boilers as they take on Northwestern Saturday at 2.30 on your television station, TV 18. Why do you watch Lafayette Live? It's hometown news. It's people that you can relate to. And when you're involved with a community, you need to know what's going on around you. And that's why Channel 18 is important. Perks your curiosity. The local news uh, affects you directly, uh, you know, knowing what happened today, uh, what's happening in the courthouse, what's, what's happening uh, locally. Lafayette Live TV 18 News, your number one news source. Hi, I'm Barbara Hobbs with tonight's winning Hoosier Lottery numbers. Daily 3779, Daily 4, 2215, Lucky 5, 9, 34, 28, 19, and 18. There was no winner in Wednesday's Hoosier Lotto drawing. Saturday's drawing will be worth an estimated $19 million. Friday Night Frenzy. Sponsored by Lafayette Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic, Kendrick Buick Cadillac Nissan, and by Smith Office Plus. Welcome to the Friday Night Frenzy and our coverage of area high school basketball. We have highlights from 10 large games, including McCutcheon Benton Central plus Delphi Twinlets. There we are. We begin our coverage with two local teams that actually want to play each other, West Lafayette and Harrison. That's right. It's Westside's third straight week in our game of the night and the Red Devils will tell you this is the toughest opponent they've faced this season. Harrison 14-1 and, and coming off an OAC championship. 
out to West Lafayette. Let's show you some highlights from this ball game. First quarter, Andrew Ford beats the buzzer with the three, RDP by four after one. Second quarter, Harrison takes advantage of its size. David Beat cleans up the mess. Raiders down 27-26 at halftime. Third quarter, West Lafayette opens it up. Eric Ness hits back-to-back -back threes, all part of a 17-7 quarter. Devils by 11, yes, 11 after three. Fourth quarter, Beek pulls the Raiders to within nine. He had 18, but that is as close as they could get. Ford on the baseline and one. He had 30 points. West side upsets Harrison 59-43. We beat a quality team, and, and we have no chance to beat that team unless we play uh, real close to, to uh, as well as we can play, and I think certainly that was the case tonight. But for us nine seniors, you know, we've never beat uh, Beacon and Gasfold and some of these guys before, coming up even starting in middle school. So to beat them tonight was just a great, great win for us. I knew that if I came out and hit some shots, then that would open up Andrew a little bit, and uh, they couldn't just focus on him. And I hit him, and I was pumped, so I was celebrating, and our crowd was just great tonight. I was disappointed in our, our ability to, to, to execute. Uh, we just didn't have any. And, and uh, you know, you get in environments like this, you better be able to do that. And uh, our kids didn't, didn't show that they could do that tonight. So Harrison falls to 14-2, and, and Westside rolls on their seventh in a row. They're now 12-3. and three. Harrison couldn't get the outside shots to fall. No, West Lafayette did a great job of doubling and tripling uh, David Beek. Then he kicks it out. Harrison just makes two out of 14 from uh, the three-point line while uh, Westside goes 7 of 13, so a big edge in a close game. Boy, that margin's surprising, though, huh? Oh, a shocker tonight and just a huge, great atmosphere for basketball. Well, at Jeff, the host Broncos continued North Central Conference action against Richmond. Let's take you out and, uh, boy, we get the up-close view there. The First period, 2-0. Richmond sophomore Andy Gagel scores on a layup to even the contest. Still in the first, the Devils' Vontez Ferguson takes the bounce and pops for two, making it 6-4, Richmond. Second period, 26-24. Devils, some fingertip passing finds Ferguson. He adds two more for the Devils. They're up 50-44 in the fourth. Dustin Denno hits the three, pulling Jeff within three, but the Devils too tough tonight. Richmond's Donald Crawley slams at the buzzer to beat Jeff 60-52. So the Broncos uh, close out North Central Conference play with a loss and a tough loss. For Central Catholic at Tri-Central, they lose in double overtime. Russell Trudeau, 20 for the Knights, and Tyler Best added 19. They lost in overtime uh, last Saturday. Yes, well, when did. we come back, Gage Butterbro joins us with some thrilling highlights from McCutcheon's journey to Benton Central. Stay with us on The Frenzy. You should have seen this laundry room a week ago. What a mess. But I didn't panic. I called H.H. Grigg. They'll service almost anything, even if you didn't buy it from them. Now that's service with my kind of style. For professional product service and repair, call H.H. Grigg. It's your corn. We won't tell you how to plant it. We won't tell you how to raise it. We won't tell you how to sell it. It's your corn. But from now on, they're our weeds. Balance 2000, the first pre-herbicide for corn that recharges with rain to deliver your best shot at true one-pass weed control. Balance 2000, they're our weeds. Why do you watch Lafayette Live? the weather. I also like to know what's going on just like in the communities, um, any type of changes that are going to take place. I like to know those kind of things like new buildings coming out or new businesses coming to town. I always watch to see what the weather is going to be like and uh, try to follow the advice. The news gives me an opportunity to find out what's going on the other side of town, other side of the world, other side of the country. Lafayette Live TV 18 News, your number one news source. Welcome back to the Frenzy. Time now to check in on one of several big matchups in the area. Well, that would be McCutcheon's trip to always tough Benton Central. Gage Butterbrot joins us live from the sports desk with the action video. Gage. And plenty of action tonight, that's for sure. McCutcheon was back in action, trying to put behind them last week's close, but not enough performance in the OAC tourney. The Mavs finished runner-up. Tonight, they did the non-conference thing at Benton Central, a big game between two. 11 and 5 teams take you out there and pick up action. 
in the third quarter. BC's Jay Dawson dribbles down, fakes, and the bucket is up and good. And the foul, Bison led it by nine at the end of three. Fourth quarter, Brad Greaves in traffic finds Blake showing underneath. BC led it 44 40. But the Mavs heat up from outside. Check out where Clayton Richard is standing. He'll knock down this three to pull within two. 13 seconds left. Doug McCarty's three connects here. That cuts the lead to one. And then with six seconds left, the inbounds. McCarty again for the tie. That And time will expire. Then we go to overtime. And an OT shown will hit the three from the corner. Benton Central, a 64-61 winner tonight. Casting in Tri-County, the Cavs, Nathan Tallman. The lob inside to Corey Arvin, the bucket, and the foul is good. That'll knock the game. Comments, work inside. Kevin Kissler turns and scores for the cast and lead. And then the comments go outside. John Craig, the big three, cast and a winner tonight, 52-46. A great game, but let's get back to that uh, B.C. McCutcheon game. A great one, one of the best ones that I've seen uh, by far this season. And uh, B.C., well, actually, McCutcheon, they're outside shooting really kept them in this one, particularly from beyond the three-point line, and they just uh, up until the overtime period. Okay, we move on to Carroll County, where the Cougars battled the Clinton Prairie Gophers. Pick up the action, playing host to CP on homecoming. Ryan Nance gets Prairie on the board first with the long triple, and it's 3-0 way beyond the arc there. Shane Webb with the drive right past his defenders, gets the layup. Webb again driving, but stopping and popping the short jumper. Ryan Nance with the fake and the shot. And he gets the shooter's bounce. Kurt Wagner will fire the long range ball for Trey, but Ramsey Smith says, I can do that. Knocking down a triple of his own. Prairie wins it 53-39. Rossville's dancers entertaining the crowd. The Hornets up on Frontier 42-25 at the half. George Ritchie on the break, takes it to the hole for the easy deuce. The Hornets right back though. Brent Fry with a nice jumper. Richie again on the break, goes in uncontested for the layup, 44-29 Rossville. Nice pass from Brock Graves to Mickey McGill, goes up strong for two of his 30 points. He's the new school all-time points record holder with 1,738. The third quarter was spent here at the free throw line due to 22 foul calls. Ryan Skinner knocks down a pair. Rossville wins at 91-64. North Judson at North White. Hopefully the referees uh, stayed out of this one. Adam Miller with the drive here. Played in twilight. I believe it was. And they're down 3-2. Sean Murphy, watch this pass. Whoop! Nice pass to Ben Westfall. And the Vikings are up 7-3. Jay's Bob Howard finally gets a hold of the ball here as we play a little volleyball. Gets it down to uh, Shane Billen. Knocks it in there and the foul. And then the Jays, Kent Altman. Knocks it down, but all North White here, 62-42. Delphi at Twin Lakes. The Oracles turning up the defense here in the third. And yes, they are. Eric Coggill picks up the loose ball and takes it to the hoop. Oracle's down 50-45. Back come twin, comes Twin Lakes. Brandon Posey knocks down the baseline. Jay, they're up by seven. But Delphi comes right back. Jordan Bass, the long three. They're within four. And then Derek Butler from behind the line. Yes, they're within three. Coghill, a chance to tie it up. A chance? No. Mm. Twin Lakes, the winner, 58-55. Crawfordsville at Southmont, second quarter action. Seaville's Jeff Strickland misses the three, but Kyle Ward rebounds ahead to Levi McCandless off on the break by himself, lays it in 17-14. Mounties. Crawfordsville's Jeff Strickland to Scott Hodges. He will score. It's a 17-16 game. Southmont's McCandless to Kyle Ward. He'll hit the three here. Southmont would win it 43-41, and everybody is happy. Frankfurt at North Montgomery will pick up action in the third quarter. Frankfurt's Carter Harris to Brandon Crone for two and the foul. Frankfurt up 34-29 at this point. Jason Morrison goes for two, but Frankfurt's Crone swats it away. Josh Bell recovers ahead to Dustin Ruiz. He will score. Frankfurt up 56-40. And North Montgomery's Josh Brodow misses the layup. Brandon Lee will rebound and scores, draws the foul. Frankfurt wins it 73-51. The Frankfurt girls get 17 from Lindsey Holden and beat North Montgomery. South Newton beat Winnemac on Josh Turnpaw's three-pointer at the buzzer. And Western knocks off Hamilton Heights. With the battle of Purdue recruits tonight, 
as Austin Parkinson's 19 led Northwestern past Peru 77-73. Brandon Jones had 33 in a losing cause. Wow. Also, Josh Smith with 33 points as Attica topped Rockville 79-60, and Covington beat Seeger 82-54. That's it in sports. Paul and Sue, back to you. Thank you very much, guys. No, not a program at Purdue. It's a dream for Ford, who had always hoped to play at Purdue, where his father, Bob, starred back in the early 70s. Yeah, you know, if I could go to Purdue and, and be half as good as my father was, you know, that, that'd be great, because he was, he was definitely an outstanding player at Purdue. And, you know, the university has done wonders for him, you know, from they've helped him out a lot uh, since he's got out of college. And I just hope, hope that uh, I'll have the same great experience that he did. I've been thinking about this since about, well, I've been thinking about it, you know, my whole life, but, you know, as of realistically, I've been thinking about it since my sophomore year when I first got in contact with him. And I'm just, I'm happy to get it out of the way. I'm real glad to be a Purdue. One local football star has also made his decision. Big Jeff fullback. Ball, good luck. It is number 15. A quick review, 37, 24, 10, 5, and 17. Snowy Joe with David Letterman. And Dennis Quaid. From Mad TV, Nicole Sullivan. The Smashing Pumpkins. In Campaign 2000, starring Maria Pope. CBS Orchestra. And now, real life Aaron Brockovich. Dave Letterman. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. I'm Dave. I'm from North Mississippi. I have no idea where that is. Don't know. Don't care. Couldn't tell you. Maybe, maybe a little too excited to see herself on camera. <laughs> but then again, she is from Mississippi, so. Ah, uh, boy, oh boy, you're looking at a guy. Man, what a day I'm having. This morning, I'm coming to work in a cab, you know, taking my cab to work this morning. Listen to this. Turns into an immigration raid. Oh. Man. You know, um... Elian Gonzalez is now uh, with his father in the Washington, D.C. area, and I'm thinking, man, uh, what a year this kid has had, and when he gets back to Cuba, he's really going to be behind. He will have missed a lot. You know, for example, he will have missed an entire semester of commie brainwashing. <laughs> Got to make that up somehow. We'll have to make that up. And uh, Elian's relatives in Miami, understandably so, are very, very edgy. You know, whenever a Jehovah's Witness comes to the front door, <laughs> they're, they're so edgy, they hide in the closet now. <laughs> oh, wait a what? No, that, that's me. Uh, <laughs> hello. So, now... Uh, Elian and his father, they're in the Washington, D.C. area, and whenever his uh, relatives from Miami come to visit, they're turned away by armed guards. And I'm thinking, geez, I wish that would happen when my relatives come to visit me. <laughs> Get out of here. Feed it. We're not... What other states is Mississippi near? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thank God this ain't who wants to be a millionaire, you know what I'm saying, lady? You're going with a penny. 
So the, uh, uh, the State Department is bringing uh, Elian, they're bringing some of his uh, playmates from uh, Cuba. They're bringing uh, up uh, to uh, visit him in the Washington, D.C. area. And I'm thinking, great! That's just what this country needs, more six-year-old Cubans. <laughs> you know? I think the last time four playmates visited the Washington, D.C. area, <laughs> the, the Clinton invited Miss October, Miss November, Miss December, Miss January. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a great program tonight. Here's my good friend, Paul Schaefer. We have a wonderful program on the uh, show for you tonight. Here are some of the guests we have on the uh, program. Smashing Pumpkins yeah. will be here tonight. <laughs> Dennis Quay. Hey Nicole Sullivan oh. and Campaign 2000 starring our own Maria Pope. We, uh, we began a, a new segment last night, and it was very popular, so we thought we would do another installment of it tonight. It's a little something we call uh, Late Show Salutes Our Favorite INS Officer. Right. Take a look. You know, uh, this is the time of year, I guess, when they have uh, various high schools have uh, high school reunions. High schools have them, colleges have them, grade schools have them. Have you ever been to a high school reunion? No, I've never, I haven't. Have, have you? you been invited? No. Well, no, yes, I have. I have. Yeah, I would think that they'd like to have you. I could, I, yeah, I couldn't yeah. make it yeah. for the uh, well, big reunion. 100th, 100th anniversary of the school, actually. Wait a minute. It was the 100th anniversary of your graduating class? No. <laughs> How old are you, my friend? I'm 100 years old. Yeah. <laughs> I, of the school. The school had ex been in existence 100 years, and uh -huh. it was a kind of a big reunion in the honor of that. Yeah. Fort William Collegiate Institute. I couldn't make it. You couldn't make it. What are you no. waiting for, 150? <laughs> yeah. What, is something really special? Yeah, but what were you saying about the reunion? This is around the time of year. This is the time of year when you have a lot of reunions. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm aware of that. Well, why? Don't you think so? I just want to move it off me, move the focus away from me. Oh, yeah. So I was invited to a reunion once, and, and I think it was like, it was my own reunion. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. They, they, they have to invite you if it's your own, don't they? I think they do, yeah. Yeah. Just... Uh, but it, it, it was like, I don't know, something like the 20th year. It was like a, a, a big one in my high school graduating class, and, and I couldn't go. I couldn't You're right. Go. But, and now I'm sorry that I couldn't go because I thought, well, they'll probably do this at least every five years, and that's the last I heard. Right. So here's what I think what happened. I think because I didn't show up, I think they got their nose out of joint and quit inviting me. But, but I want to tell you, who, whoever is running the reunion for Broderville High School class of 1965, listen to me! <laughs> You're required by law to invite me. <laughs> boy, boy, boy. But anyway. But anyway, uh, it is the time of year when you have a lot of these reunions. <laughs> and so tonight we're going to give you a quiz uh, on what goes on at high school reunions. Paul, here we go. Flushing High Reunion. It's the Flushing High Reunion. All right, we sent our we sent our video cameras to Flushing High Flushing School. High School. Uh, Flushing High School. They were celebrating the graduating classes of 67, 68, 69, 70, and 71. Okay. All together, so it was like a big deal. All right, here's your little uh, video quiz. Take it, uh, take it at home. Uh, uh, write the, the results and, and uh, take them to your local CBS affiliate. 
A senior took his test on Dave's show. <laughs> Is Walter Cronkite here tonight? Uh, why do you ask? I just had a flashback. I remember one night I was waiting for Walter Cronkite all night and he never yeah, showed up. Right. <laughs> Woo! Shortly thereafter, I had the surgery. Yeah. That was the night Hillary Clinton was on the show. Right. And I did a thing and I was supposed to wait for it. And as soon as I got doing, doing the thing, Walter Cronkite's supposed to come supposed out. Supposed to come out. Just Never nothing. did. Crickets. Crickets and tumbleweed. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Everybody's looking at me. Go ahead. Yeah. That's all you're getting. What does that mean? I don't know. I, I guess I dreamed that Walter Cronkite was going to be yeah. here that night. <laughs> I had kind of a little deja vu thing earlier tonight. tonight. But, Why was that? What well, reminded we, you? The guys, the INS uh, goons, yeah. were supposed to come and, and roust out uh, Tony, just bing, bing. Right. And it didn't happen. And, oh. and so I had to do you, and then I walked over here, and then they come out. Right. And so I just thought, They were supposed to break. Ah, it's the curse of Walter Cronkite. <laughs> uh, and you said things before the show. Things will be different when I get my show. <laughs> what? Just before the show, didn't you say, just as you, are they really going to come out or is it going to be another oh, Walter What did I say just before the show? You said, are the INS guys going to come out or is it going to be like another Walter Cronkite? That's Cronk, right. I, I said that. And yeah. so what yeah, happened? Thank God yeah, I have a witness. I, and what was the reply to that? No, no. Everything <laughs> will be fine. <laughs> yes. I'll be there. Yeah, they'll be there. That's yeah. right. Would have been funny if Walter Cronkite had come out. <laughs> well, that's the way it is. Uh, what are you doing here? What? If I seem a little wired tonight, it's because I've had too much decaffeinated coffee. Oh. <laughs> right, yeah, right. All right. All right. All right. You know, but in that brief moment when you're waiting for Walter Cronkite and he don't show up, you think to yourself, holy crap, something went wrong with the surgery. <laughs> you know? Your mind is shutting down. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's the high school graduation quiz uh, uh, reunion. You know, it's uh, this time of year. Yeah, just lots of everywhere. Yeah. I miss you mine. can't walk down the street without bumping into a I high school me. reunion this time of year. Uh, this woman is having a hard time getting over A, a painful divorce, B, the loss of her job, C, the death of her pet zebra. <laughs> Several reunion attendees have already asked this DJ to put on A, Stairway to Heaven, B, Light My Fire, C, Pants. <laughs> pants. pants. Oh, if these pants could talk. <laughs> 30 years after graduation, this man right here, A, is a successful stockbroker, B, teaches at his old school, C, still can't talk to girls. <laughs> This man is trying to, A, recall uh, this woman's name, uh, B, get up the nerve to say hello, C, cut the other strap of her dress with his heat vision. Babe. Babe. See, that'd be me. I'd be going to that high school uh, reunion thing looking to see what I could, you know, uh, a little trouble. See, see what you could... You never know what you might fall into. You After know all I mean? these years, yeah. You never know. Old, yeah, old uh, flames run deep. Yeah. Old flame front, old flame front deep. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm doing tonight's show under protest. Now why is that? I've lodged, lodged a protest with the talk show commission. About Walter Cronkite? Yeah, that damn thing. I, don't, I, I ain't got a lot of time left to be waiting around on botched cues, you I know? know. <laughs> I know, they'll be there, don't you worry. <laughs> Back in high school, these two were A, sweethearts, B, next-door neighbors, <laughs> C, co-presidents of the god-awful dancing club. <laughs> Let's see that again. I want to see that again. Go back. I mean, God bless people, but how can you... <laughs> how can you do that? Uh, <laughs> Which is... I, I remember my first beer. Ah. Let me see that one more time, because uh -huh. if you run into these people, please stop them. Throw a blanket on them. Look at this. Just stop it.
<laughs> oh, man. Uh, this reunion attendee is thinking, A, I wonder when the dancing will begin. B, I hope some of my old teachers will show up. C, I've wasted my life. <laughs> That's sad, isn't it? Uh, this reunion attendee is angrily telling her classmates, A, I can't believe they towed my car. <laughs> B, that waiter spilled a drink on me. C, I want to be called Danielle now, not Daniel. <laughs> this man is A, greeting two old friends. B, going to let the, get them a drink. C, about to make a 30-year dream come true. <laughs> Uh, we got a great show, Dennis Quaid, Nicole Sullivan. When we come back now, top 10 Purdue University basketball head coach Gene Cady, tips for good looking. We'll be right back. <laughs> How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the show. You saw, Paul, did you see what happened during the commercial? Was I was that? besieged here at the desk. Everybody running up here to explain to me that the mistake was my fault. Your fault. I, I'm not taking the rap for this How one. Could it and be? you, you, chief among uh, us, should know that it's not my fault because we had the conversation upstairs, didn't we? But you're saying it is my fault. You ruined my bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to have the surgery again. Uh, Dennis Quaid is on the program tonight. Nicole Sullivan and uh, Smashing Pumpkins. It's time now, ladies and gentlemen, for Campaign 2000. Here we go. Campaign 2000. Brought to you by United States Attorney General Janet Reno. Don't get up. We'll let ourselves in. I could still be standing out there. That's all I'm saying. I understand. Uh, here now, uh, a panel of members on Campaign 2000, uh, Paul Schaefer, our Thank musical you. director, Thank and you, uh, the star of Campaign 2000, uh, Maria Pope, yes. who also believes that it was my fault. Maria, welcome to the show. Thank you very much <laughs> uh, for being here. Paul, do you have anything on Campaign Well, I want to know, how could it possibly be your fault? Exactly. Thank you very much, Paul. <laughs> at, at last, somebody has the courage to stand up and speak the truth. <laughs> you remember that night? Sure. The night that Hillary was I, I could have come out from dinner and come back and Walter Cronkite still right. wouldn't be here. Yeah. Maria, do you have anything for campaign 2000? No. Huh? No. What's the matter? <laughs> she, now, see, she's well, all she's upset. Down, yeah. <laughs> I have something, thank God, okay. for campaign 2000. Let's hear I'm at home last night watching TV, and by the way, isn't TV great? <laughs> isn't it great? Of course it's great. I think TV is getting better and better and better. I believe it's... Because now you have 4,000 channels. Uh, so I was watching something, and I saw a guy, and I believe he's from Indiana, coincidentally. I saw a guy uh, whose wife dropped a bowling ball on his head. How many of you saw it? You saw it? <laughs> a fellow loser in the audience. So, this guy... He's got, he's got an outfit on, and the wife drops a bowling ball on his head. Nice. He's yeah. got an outfit okay, on. Here, take a look. There, that's a guy right there. They're putting those, uh, I don't know, something off his front it's yard. Cement, there she is with the bowling ball. That's his wife. They're married. Here bombs we go. Away. Yeah, bombs away. Yeah. Oh, wow. He's okay. Wow. Yeah, he's okay. Oh. Let's take a look at it again. Here we go. This is TV. This is American TV. This is the way we like it. Look at that. Uh, All right, now wait a minute, wait a minute. Is he okay? Let's just wait here and check. Is he, is he okay? And he's... Yes, he's okay. He's okay. You have anything else? You know what it is, you know, that conversation, well, I want to be in the act, too. All right, you can drop the bowling ball on my head. <laughs> is that it? I guess. All right, close up campaign 2000. Here we go. Campaign 2000 has been brought to you by the U.S. Census. We want to know who you are, where you are, and just what the hell you're trying to pull. By Richard Simmons. He's hot, he's hunky, he's greased up and ready to go May 12th on The Late Show. Daddy's coming home.
and by Purdue University head basketball coach Gene Cady. Purdue basketball, it will comb you over. All right, thank you very much. I just hate, I hate starting a show like this where now everybody is mad at me. Uh, <laughs> but I'm telling you, there was nothing else going to happen. You understand no, what I'm saying? No. We were done with that joke. That's right. The joke Exactly. Thank you, Paul. Come on. Uh, Come okay. On. Huh? Bring the guys on. What guys? The uh, FD, FDA that's, guys. That's the FDA guys. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's tonight's top ten list. Let's try that. The uh, category tonight, uh, top 10 Purdue University basketball head coach Gene Cady tips for looking your best. We just, we just saw him there. Yes. Uh, that's the uh, top 10 list uh, for tonight. Top 10 Purdue University basketball head coach Gene Cady tips for looking your best. And here to present tonight's top 10 list all the way from West Lafayette, your National Association of Basketball Coaches and the Big Ten Basketball Coach of the Year from Purdue University, Coach Gene Cady. Gene, come on up. Okay, here we go. Top 10 head coach Gene Cady tips for looking your best. Number 10. Shake head violently. If a single hair moves, keep spraying. Yeah. <laughs> Number nine. You can find some snazzy ties in the stadium lost and found. <laughs> Number eight. Always comb with the grain, not against it. That's right. Always with the grain, not against it. Number seven. Yelling at your players makes your face purple. That's sort of like having a tan. That's right. <laughs> Number six. Tight pants highlight the fact that you're a member of the Big Ten. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. What? Number five. Don't be one of those guys with hair plugs. I mean, who do they think they're fooling? <laughs> <laughs> Number four. I live by one simple rule. Try to look better than Dick Vitale. Yeah. Not easy to do, my friend. Number three. On special occasions, I like to use a little eyeliner. Well, why not, for heaven's sake? Number two. Never, under any circumstances, go to Letterman's Barber. Yeah, well, that's, I can't argue that. And the number one uh, head coach, Gene Cady, tip for looking your best. Forget six-pack abs, just go for the six-pack. Just go for the six-pack. I'm pulling for you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We'll be right back with Dennis Quaid. I don't want to scare you, so I'm going to do this very slowly. Burger King calls this the extreme double cheeseburger. Two tempting quarter pound burgers smothered with four slices of melted cheese, plus a cheese sauce with a very enticing kick. Not ready to take on this much burger? That's okay. It doesn't make you any less of a man. Got the urge? Announcing the world premiere of the all-new Chevy Tahoe. More power, more room, more SUV. It's nowhere near anything. Chevy Tahoe, like a rock. John Denver's music inspired millions. Now CBS presents the untold story of his life. I thought a song could change the world. The John Denver Story, CBS Sunday. Everyone's talking about it. Whether you're from Delphi, Flower, Logansport, Remington, or right here in Lafayette, they're all talking about our big spring clearance sale right here at Budget Car Sales and Leasing in Lafayette. Look, every vehicle in our lot has been marked for the special final sellout. Like this 2000 Silverado, you will buy it now for just $26,988. Or this 99 Grand Caravan, buy it now for $17,988. See us right now, or better yet, pick up that phone and call. 
A new age is dawning where everyone is free to set their own course, to travel their own path. And when the course is blocked or the path uncertain, there's a friend nearby who can help clear the way with the insurance plan we didn't think we could find, the mortgage we didn't think we could get, the investments we know we need to make. Solution, Union Planters. Of all the things that make Bob Griffiths proud, one thing stands above all the rest. For Bob Griffiths, nothing is more important than family. So when Bob Griffiths says he'll work for family tax relief to end wasteful spending and protect Social Security, we can trust him to get the job done. After all, Bob Griffiths doesn't just say he'll fight for family values. He's been living them all his life. Bob Griffiths, experience we can trust, conservative values we all share.